Hey guys, welcome to the Fi Tonight channel. At the publication report as boxing stands, WBC lightweight title holder Devin Haney agreed to fight with the absolute champion of his division, George Cambosos. According to media reports, their fight will take place on June 5 at Marvel Stadium in Melbourne, Australia. The fight will be broadcast by ESPN, which works closely with Bob Arum's top rank promotion company. The deal Haney made with Cambosos promoter Ludi Bella and Bob Arum provides for an immediate rematch. If he defeats Cambosos in Australia and remains at lightweight, if the American boxer defeats Cambosos twice, then he will probably meet with Vasily Lomachenko. Recall that early it was the Ukrainian boxer who was the main candidate for the fight with Cambosos. Friends, before starting to watch this video, I would like to ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you really enjoy the content, then please subscribe to my channel and keep watching the videos. If you are subscribed, then receive notifications about the release of new videos. You do not even have to look for anything personally. I really want to get 1000 subscribers on my channel. I'm trying very hard absolutely every day and I need your support. Your likes, comments, reposts to social networks. Thanks to everyone who subscribes to my channel. You are my support. Thank you so much. Floyd Mayweather reacts to Gervonta Davis contract expiring. Nothing lasts forever. It's looking increasingly like Gervonta Davis is leaving Mayweather promotions. After Davis revealed his contract is up with Mayweather after his upcoming bout with Rolando Romero, Floyd Mayweather seemingly all but confirmed Davis won't be with his promotional outfit moving forward. Nothing lasts forever. I will always love Tank. I love him. I love him. Look at him like a son. He has to do what's best for him, Mayweather told reporters. I feel like I've done a great job. Too far. I mean just building him and putting him in good fights. Great fights. And he is steady growing, steady learning, and I am proud of him. Davis has become one of the biggest stars in the boxing side signing with Mayweather, racking up a 26-0 carry record heading into his boat with Romero. The 27-year-old tweeted and delivered a comment earlier this week that said Mayweather was pushing the fight with Romero because this is the last fight of his contract. Romero is also signing to Mayweather promotions, meaning the company stands to rake in a massive hole in the vote between the two undefeated fighters. It seems Mayweather is trying to market Romero as one of the next big things in boxing, perhaps as a potential replacement for Davis. Romero has spent the month talking trash in hopes of building hype for the boat, while Davis has taken a calmer, more measured approach. Provided he is able to defeat Romero, and he will be a heavy favorite to do so, David should have his peak of promotions and a huge contract waiting for him come May. Superstar in the making Jarbon Tatanka Davis dropped a bomb on social media on Tuesday, revealing that his upcoming pay per view clash with Rolando Romero this May 28 will be the last under his contract with Mayweather Promotions. My contract up that why they want me to fight this clone so bad. David said via his worthy Twitter account referring to his upcoming opponent. Also a Mayweather Promotions fighter while responding to a criticism about Mayweather Promotions keeping him in house to his detriment. The implications of a free agent Davis are huge. Ironically, the 27 year old knockout puncher may have to follow the exact same path as Floyd Mayweather in order to achieve the next level stardom. And that path involves ditching his promoter in favor of full independence. Specifically, that means ditching Mayweather, as Mayweather ditched Bob Arum all those years ago, to facilitate his own race to superstardom and super rage. There are a ton of big, legacy defending fights to be had in the 130 140 pounds weight range, and it seems as told Mayweather promotions has been unwilling to pursue any of them. Instead, they've picked around the perimeter of acceptable fights, trying to build Davis' profile with highlights real knockouts instead of a big legacy building challenges. To some extent, the Mayweather promotions plan has worked. Tank is a legged leaf gay draw, arguably second in North America to only Seul Alvarez. He has also made his way to being an exclusive pay-per-view fighter, 
although sales figures have yet to reach the star level. But that step up toward next level stardom will require next level position. Davis will have to fight and beat guys like George Cambosos, Vasily Lomachenko, Tefimo Lopez, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Shakur Stevenson, Regis for Grace and Josh Taylor, all in the 130-140 pounds category to be seen as a true elite. Patience is running thin on the everyone but matchmaking strategy currently in place for Davis, and it is just a matter of time before fans just move on to somebody who will give them the fights they want to see. In the past, the heavy-handed Baltimore native has hit back at criticism over his level of position. In November, on Brian Castor's last stand podcast, he publicly pointed a finger back at the other top lightweights, asserting aloud, name somebody that is fighting the top warrior. You don't see any other top fighters fighting top guys. Don't just put everything on me and say I'm not fighting top guys. But the reality is that, yeah, fighting top guys is a key component to actually staying a top guy himself. A free agent Jerome Davis, if he plays his card right, could hope from platform to platform and promoter to promoter, picking the biggest and best fights and accumulating power until he gets to the point where everyone has to come to him and work entirely under his terms and conditions. Again, this is what my weather did and it absolutely would not have been possible if he hadn't become a full free agent. So what will Davis do following this upcoming fight? On what terms are he and my weather right now? Is there any bad blood brewing during the relationship that has not always been 100% happy and bright? Just how aggressive does Davis want to be in Persian career or self-determination? And is he even wanting to undergo such a heavy task? There are obviously a lot of questions when it comes to Davis' future. Right now, though, he is had to face a brash and agitating Raul Romero on May 28, who has a legged one-punch power and the potential to change Tang's course of destiny entirely. The Beller, who promotes Camposos, couldn't reach a deal with a dozen to stream the boat, so he pivoted to ESPN, this time with Haney as the opponent. Cambosos 28 defeated Tefimo Lopez in November to capture four titles in ESPN's upset of the year. The fight was brutal from the opening bell. Cambosos dropped Lopez in round first, but was forced to survive a 10 round knockdown and row to the split decision victory. The Australian is rated number one by ESPN at lightweight, but he will be installed as an underdog once again. Henny, ESPN's number four boxer at 135 pounds, broke out in 2021 with decision victories of former champions Jorge Linares and Rosa Diaz Jr. in May and December, respectively. The smooth boxing Henny isn't a power puncher but processes an excellent job and is regarded as one of the sport's best defensive fighters. Cambosos wasn't well regarded before he earned it a title shot with a split decision win over Lee Shelby in October 2020. Even then, he was viewed as a routine title defense against Lopez, then seen as one of the sport's top pound-for-pound -pound boxers. But Cambosos shocked the boxing world with his greed, combination punching and power in one of the best performances of 2021. Adding energy to the fight is that the bet regarding the WBC title. Cambosos won the IBF, WBO, WBA titles and WBC franchise title from Lopez. Haney is the holder of the WBC's title as well. While many regard Cambosos as an undisputed champion, there are also those who believe Haney has a legitimate claim to his own WBC title. Haney was elevated from interim title holder to WBC champion, while Loma was designated franchise champ. Loma then lost the titles to Lopez in October 2020, before Lopez was defeated by Cambosos. If Haney can defeat Cambosos twice, there will be plentiful options for him on ESPN. But first, Haney will travel halfway around the world for his shot at lightweight supremacy. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel.